Hello, welcome to the Peaceful Wood Turner. I have this piece of oak here that uh, was actually down limb under a tree uh, near a firehouse. Uh, it's been down for a while. I kind of kept an eye out to see what was going on, see if things were getting cleaned up or whatever. And uh, it looks like this was just something that got knocked down at one point during a storm, and they got it out from under the, or they got it out from the lawn and put it under the tree. And I guess somebody was going to come back and clean it up at some point. But since they hadn't gotten to it, I figured I could probably you know, make use of a couple pieces of it. So it's really dry. Uh, there's a variety of spalting and stuff going on inside this. On the ends, there, there's some different colors and stuff, which I think is going to turn out really nice. It all seems to be pretty hard. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start by uh, smoothing it off. And then hopefully I'll be able to make a goblet out of it. I'm going to start at about 600 RPM, actually about 500 RPM, and I've just got my roughing gouge here. You see a lot of different colors in here. This stuff seems to be pretty solid. It's just a little bit weak. And then over here is really dark, really strong, really hard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just round it off a little bit more and then I'm going to part it off right around in here so that this can become the, uh, the actual bowl of the goblet and a short stem and a base. There we go. So now I can start hollowing this out and then I'll shape the outside. I want to leave as much body down here as I can until I'm ready to start working on that because once I thin this down to the stem of the goblet, then we're going to start having problems with strength. So a little shaping on the outside and then the inside. So I brought my tailstock up just to give myself a little bit more stability. I'm going to go a little bit faster now and I'm going to switch over to the spindle gouge. Okay, we've got the basic shape here. So now I'm just gonna work on uh, taking this down a bit and coming in and opening up my bowl. So I'm repositioned, I've got my bowl gouge. And I'm just gonna start by making my hole in the center and then I'll widen out from there.
Looks like, I'm about, looks like I'm about halfway there. I've switched obviously to my scraper. I get a lot fewer catches with the scraper than I do with almost anything else once I'm deep inside something. So I'm really close. I've uh, put a light up here so you guys can see a little better. And believe it or not, having the camera right here gives me another angle that I can look and see where my tool is. I can look at the little viewfinder screen to be able to see what's going on. Otherwise, I'm kind of leaning over in a really weird position. So I'm just going to keep going a little bit deeper and see where we're at. I have about a half inch left to go, maybe a little bit, well, even less than that I think. Almost to my depth. Looks like I have my full depth. So I'm going to trim out the sides a little bit. I'm also going to start taking off some of the lip up here. I left it a little heavy just to give myself a little bit more guidance, but I'm going to need to start taking it off now. Okay, we're reset. The live center is actually down in the bowl just to make everything a little bit more stable. And I'm gonna start working on shaping out the base and slowly working my way into the stem. I need to first make a mark so that I know where I'm working from. I'm just gonna part it off a little bit. I just won't go any further than that mark and I'll work everything up from there. So this is my 120 grit sanding sponge. One thing I'm starting to learn is when I think I've sanded enough, I haven't. looking really nice. Gonna go higher grit now. 
So I've got a 400 grit. Five hundred grit. Okay, before I go any further, I'm going to clean it off a little bit. So now I have an eight hundred grit. As I do this higher grit, we should start seeing a shine come up a little bit. Fifteen hundred grit. See, we got a nice little shine already. Okay, the last thing is going to be a 2000 grip. Alright, that's a nice smooth finish. It feels really nice. Even with the gloves on, I can feel how smooth it is. It's just like, you know, sliding over plastic or glass or something. But it's got a little more of that tactile thing that you get from wood. I really like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to part it off after I sand the inside. And then I'm going to coat it with an epoxy. I want it to have a really hard, strong, smooth finish. I'm going to have to be very careful with the epoxy because I've had some trouble with it in the past where I've ended up with a, with a few drips, a few bubbles, all those kind of things, and I definitely don't want that. So I'm going to sand it, I'll part it off, and then we'll put the epoxy on. Got my sanding finished, got it all parted off. It's 
really pretty. There are a couple of uh, wormhole type things that actually do go all the way through, which I think is neat. It adds a little bit of character, but at the same time, obviously, it wouldn't actually hold any liquid if we left it that way. I'm putting an epoxy on it. Uh, the reason for that is that the epoxy is going to give a really hard finish, and it's also going to be able to endure whatever uh, people do to it. So, obviously, the epoxy is a two part. I've got hardener and rosin. And I just use these old medicine things from when there's kids around. Because that way I can measure it out. I know that I have a teaspoon of hardener. I'm going to do this in stages. Starting with just getting the inside and getting an even coat on it. One of the problems that I had in the past with this was that had too heavy a coat on the inside, and by the time it had set, it had pooled at the bottom, and it had air bubbles. And you can get rid of the air bubbles by using a torch while it's setting, but I'm not really going to be able to keep track of it that way, and I don't really want to stick a torch in there. So I'm going to stir this up smooth as I can. Try to avoid making too many air bubbles in it. And I'm going to pour some in. There's a nice layer of it in the bottom there and I'm going to slowly work it around. gravity do some of the work for me here and also trying to let it get a good bite on the sides so that's a good start spread it a little bit now that gravity has helped I'm gonna start kind of just spreading it around sorry I took you off screen there for a second spot right there that just doesn't quite want to let anything get in it. There we go. So I'm really trying to work it up the sides. Just trying to make a nice thin coat. If there's some place I don't get, I can always come back and get it. But when I have too much, I end up getting, well, I get bubbles like those that are in there. And I get a really heavy, thick layer in the bottom. I don't want that. Two coats of epoxy on right now. It's looking really nice. It's got a nice shine to it. Uh, there's a little bit of buildup of epoxy in the base of the cup, but I don't really see that as being a problem. Uh, I don't have anywhere near as many bubbles as I've had on some other projects, which is really good. One problem that I do have is I've got this little hole right here, this little worm hole, and it goes all the way through. And I was hoping that by putting the epoxy on, I would get enough of the skin on there to be able to build up some coats and. Uh, really fill that in. However, the epoxy flows really well and it has just gone right through the hole, uh, not leaving any drip marks, but it hasn't built up at all. You can actually kind of see through the hole at the right angle. So what I'm going to do, since I need to do more coats on the exterior anyway, is I'm going to put a little bit of beeswax in the hole from the inside, just to give a barrier for the epoxy to sit against. And what I'm hoping is that this epoxy will not bond at all to the beeswax, will not come through, and therefore will make a nice little plug for that hole that I can build against. So I've got that worked in there. 
a little hard to see right there though. And I can see if I look down at just the right angle and the light hits the right way, I can see that it's filling it in. Now, some of these areas, the epoxy really just soaked in because the wood is in, in very good shape. So you can see there's a lot more shine on the more solid areas and a lot less on some of the others. And that's where I need to build up and fill in. And I'm just going to make another ounce or so of epoxy and fill it on it. My goblet has a really nice uh, finish on it now. It's nice and hard. There's really good shine to it. Everything is set up really well. There's been a couple of coats on here. I put the beeswax on the inside on this little wormhole, and I've got a good build up here now. This hole is really nicely sealed. So I'm just going to do one more coat. I'm just going to do a half batch, which is about a you know, half teaspoon of each, so a teaspoon of the whole uh, thing. And part of that is so that I can also finish off the bottom here. And I'm going to have to do a little bit of trimming and sanding afterwards to just get off the stuff that's uh, kind of overflow on the sides. epoxy on. Everything's set. I really like the finish on this. It's a really nice shine to it. A couple problems that I see right off the bat is that in these areas where there was heavier spalting, it really soaked up a lot more of the finish, so it's not quite even. That I have a problem with. You can see the shine over here. This looks really, really pretty. And then as you come around, it kind of loses some of that. Now, the beeswax that I put in here has held up well, and it really stopped the hole, so the epoxy has set well. Another problem I have is that on these edges that we're sitting against the uh, base, we have these little lips of epoxy that are kind of built up. So I try to avoid that and somehow it still happened. Um, I'm going to have to get better with how I apply my epoxy and make sure I use a lot of thin coats as opposed to thicker coats. So what I'm going to do now is take this off with a 500 grit sandpaper. Uh, I'm going to do it wet just to uh, try to get a better finish on it. And then after that I'm going to take it and buff it. buff the entire piece. It's a lot smoother on the bottom now. I took out the beeswax that was on the inside blocking the hole. Uh, it's pretty hard at this point, the beeswax, so I really want to um, try to buff that out a little bit and make everything a little bit nicer on the inside. Uh, I thought about heating this up to try to get the beeswax out, but I figured then I was still just going to have a coating of beeswax on the inside, so either way I'm going to have kind of the same thing. So I'm going to hit it with the uh, Dremel here and just try to uh, shine it up a little bit. Alright, let's get the lint out of here and we'll see how we have it. <laughs> 